All right, welcome back. This is Newslink right here on ENCA. So the Cash and Transit Association is quite concerned, and it's understandably so, about the drastic increase in robberies across the country. And just this past weekend alone, robbers had cornered and blew up a cash transport vehicle on the N12 near Deep Kloof. And also last week, Crime Watch focused on the scourge. It looked at the modus operandi used and spoke to experts on this disturbing matter. So Crime Watch host and anti-crime activist Yusuf Abramji uh, joins us now in studio for some insights into this. Yusuf, thank you so much for your time. Good morning to you. I wish we were talking about something different, but it has to be once again about the scourge of crime in this country, the focus now being on cash and transit highs. What happened this past weekend? Good morning, Tumelo. Crime, crime and more crime. Let me give you a quick update. 253 cash in transit robberies since January up to this morning. The last few days... Uh, of October, we had 13 uh, attacks on, on cash vans, some of them in broad daylight, like we've seen in the N12 yeah. on Saturday, like we've seen in Harankwa, north of Pretoria. 22 security guards have been killed. 121 have been injured. Um, also, 12 members of the public have been gunned down, two policemen injured, and at least 22 other civilians killed in these attacks. So what we are dealing with here is a full-scale war, brazen highway robberies in mm. broad daylight, and these robbers are getting away with millions and millions of rands. And despite the police making some inroads, 19 suspected robbers killed in Makado a few weeks ago. We had four in Pwamashu the other day. In Gauteng, there were a few breakthroughs. These gangs are still continuing, and they are causing mayhem. What's the role of the civilians here as well? Because even with the N12 uh, cash and transit robbery, we saw people crossing a highway just to get some money on the road. That has become a very, very worrying trend. Yeah. Whenever there is a major cash in transit house, or even a smaller one, uh, these members of the public surge forward. They go for whatever cash is left behind. What they are doing is, number one, putting their own lives at risk because we've seen while the gunfire is continuing, yeah. while, the, while the bombs are going off, they're running towards the cash vans. Secondly, they're contaminating the crime scenes. Mm -hmm which means that uh, the lead, the DNA that the police need to pick up there is destroyed. And thirdly, police have made a few arrests, but very few. And I think that trend, and I spoke to the C uh, CIT Association of South Africa, I spoke to Fidelity, one of South Africa's largest cash carriers, and they are really concerned about this trend, about members of the public coming forward. It's a free for all. Yeah. It's supposed to be a moment where South Africans rally together to be eyewitnesses and assist law enforcement, but it seems like they're also, you know, aiding by uh, going to... Let, 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 me, let scene, me add right? to Melo. Yeah? We, we love the viral videos. Uh, mm. It gives us content. But before you shoot a viral video, do the right thing and try mm. to call 1111, go to one of your safety apps, call for help. And, and make sure you are safe, because even by videoing these people, like we've seen, you're putting your lives at risk because people, these gangs simply open fire. Yeah, they don't care anymore. They're quite brazen, as you've mentioned before. But also, even for those who had called the police, I mean, reports coming in that they only responded 30 minutes later. You know, Tumelo, the N12 incident near Southgate on Saturday, mm. it happened in broad daylight. Uh, one of the busiest highways in that area. That's right. And yet we are told that the police station is just a few kilometers away, JMPD, Gauteng traffic, SAPS. We are told that they only arrived 15, 20 minutes later on. And yet members of the public were out there almost in their hundreds, even before the police arrived. And there's one viral video that we posted, mm. uh, which I posted on social media, where while the police are there on the scene, some members are still trying to pick up the remains of the cash. What does it tell you? So I think a lot of work needs to be done. Um, you know, uh, this morning ENCA asked on, on social media mm -hmm. what, what needs to be done. I think there needs to be a multifaceted approach. And I think the police are really trying. The security companies are putting in more technology. G4S, for example, mm -hmm. they're the hardest hit, followed by Fidelity, Easy Cash, one of the smaller companies, uh, also being targeted. Um, and really, uh, I think there needs to be a multifaceted approach. Yeah. Somebody suggested, do we use helicopters? Do we have a cashless society? I don't think it will ever happen. But really, the spate of these attacks and what we are seeing in, in, a, uh, in the run-up to the festive season, normally they go up uh, in the run-up to Christmas, these robbers also want cash. Right. It's something worrying, but I think we're dealing here with virtually dozens of gangs. They strike with military precision. They are dangerous. They are daring. They are brazen. Uh, and my worry is, you know, while Gauteng is a hotspot, 
Uh, we've seen the number of attacks in KwaZulu-Natal, outside Kwamashu, yeah. two or three this last week. Uh, we've seen it in Pumalanga and Limpopo, and they are not stopping. Yeah. And you're also just telling me, even uh, before we start our conversation, that some of these cases are not even reported, or at least are not as viral on social media as we'd like them to be. The modus operandi that these syndicates also use in taking civilians, using them as getaway vehicles mm -hmm. and drivers, that's concerning as well, Yusuf. Well, in all the robberies, without exception, they come heavily armed, they come with explosives, they come with four or five, sometimes even eight vehicles. Mm. All those vehicles are either hijacked or stolen. So when they hijack your car, very often it lands up with the CIT robbers, they then dump the vehicles. The, they then drive a vehicle or two into the cash van, they, uh, it bursts into flames, mm. they then use the explosives. And the easy availability of explosives is another worry. We know that police have arrested some people on the Zimbabwean border into South Africa. We know another, another few arrests have been made. These explosives are simply available. And now the robbers are also, while they're attacking the cash vans, attacking ATMs. The last few weeks, we've seen a number of ATM attacks. They're supposed to be, they, they, uh, they appear to be going up by the day. Mm. We spoke to Sebrik, and they've also expressed concern. So, you know, it again shows that these gangs strike uh, with, with precision. Uh, and these people are, are, I mean, they open fire in broad daylight. Yeah, that's so right. you, you, you see in the Kwamashu one, for example, how the metal from the Fidelity vehicle shoots hundreds of meters into the air, and yet there are people standing nearby. Uh, mm -hmm. And there was a lady in the N12 one in a BMW that drove into the CIT, they hijacked her, they took her captive, they then dropped her off later on and they made her off with her vehicle. What's to be done, especially from the perspective of, you know, the cash and transit uh, companies, the, these vehicles, Fidelity, G4, as you've mentioned some of them, in terms of beefing up security, um, you know, around the vehicles, but also their personnel. You've just mentioned some that have lost their lives in the line of duty, transporting this money. Did they share with you in terms of what strategies are now in place? Hopefully not giving away too much to these gangs who might be listening. Well, it's no secret that... Uh, camera footage, closed circuit television cameras where the vehicles are being monitored live yeah. uh, is happening. We know that uh, some companies are using helicopters to respond, to try to track down these robbers. But you know what? You can't be anywhere and everywhere. Mm. There's a PUDU system that we highlighted on Crime Watch some time ago. Polyurethane uh, devices where the minute a cash van comes in the attack, you can press a button and all the money gets frozen. Uh, into almost like a chemical mixture and the money is useless. Mm. We know they are using dye-stained money uh, that is a deterrent. Fidelity, for example, has invested millions of rands into new vehicles. And I think at the end of the day, to me, let's be honest, mm. uh, it's costing the insurance companies millions and millions of rands. But with these attacks, clearly the insurance companies are going to put up their premiums. These cash and transit guards live in fear. They drive in fear. Yeah. They don't know in the morning whether they're going to come home. Uh, and if you ask me, you know, where's the modus operandi, mm. rural, urban, daytime, nighttime, it's basically everywhere. Uh, we, we've seen in, in, in Pumalanga, uh, just uh, the farmers the other day tried to defend uh, the cash van and the guards. Four of them were shot dead. Mm. They're even going for the rural areas. But the brazen highway robberies, the cash heist we are seeing, especially in Gauteng, is really a cause of concern. It takes me back many years right. where I remember on the N1 near Grayston there was a CIT robbery, again, in broad daylight. And they go and they drive away. And, and, and you know, uh, uh, these people just seem to be getting away with it. And that is why the industry and the police often say, we need members of the public to come forward with information. Right. If you think anything suspicious in your neighborhood, people driving fancy cars, uh, unusual activity, if you see something, say something, that is going to be one of the, the, the ways of cracking the backbone of the syndicate. Yeah, and reminding me of what Brigadier uh, Nandi mentioned to Jason Thathia out in Guamashu saying they also blend in very well in the communities because mm. some of their hideaway spots are right where community members are. So please come forward with information. Yusuf, thank you so much for joining me right here on Newsling, talking more about you know, the brazen crime that we're seeing when it comes to cash and transit uh, heists and hijackings, getaway cars by civilians, uh, equally being kidnapped in the process. Quite a concern. And uh, hopefully, of course, will bring this uh, to the fore for you to stay cautious where you are and assist law enforcement with any information you may have. That's Crime Watch host and anti-crime activist Yusuf Abramji.